Thanks for coming this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you would be aware that today in the uh, Townsville District Court, um, Benjamin Price, a former officer, was convicted on four counts uh, in relation to assault occasioning bodily harm and common assault. Um, he received uh, ter various terms of imprisonment. The most lengthy term is 27 months imprisonment and all were concurrent. I understand that he is eligible for parole uh, in uh, July of next year. Uh, this has been a very disturbing case for us and again on behalf of the Queensland Police Service I apologise both to the victims, their families and the community of Queensland for what is inexcusable behaviour. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Um, in terms of the other officers who, who, um, who stood by and witnessed it witnessed this but didn't report the, um, the activities of Benjamin Price. At what stages of disciplinary action are they? Five are officers, that? sorry, five officers have since resigned uh, in addition to uh, Price themselves. Uh, there are three officers uh, where disciplinary processes are now being considered. Three, there's three extra serving officers? That's correct. Okay. And what's the time frame with this discipline? Um, we'll just have to await the process as it, as it runs out. What kind of message does uh, his jail time send to that small minority of officers who do have the cowboy attitude and are very gung-ho when it comes to, to violence? The uh, issue of use of force by all of our, our officers is uh, obviously uh, critical to the credibility of the Queensland Police Service. Um, for those who've, who've heard the actions of Price through the court process, um, I, I have no doubt that there would be not one police officer or member of the community who could condone uh, Price's actions in the way that he used excessive force against a number of people. Uh, the Queensland Police Service uh, certainly does not condone his conduct in any shape or form and I think it sends a very clear message to any member of our organisation who would even be thinking of that. Um, that they should obey our codes of conduct and our use of force models. What do you say to Price's um, defence, which was that uh, Ely Beach is a difficult post for any police officer due to the high level of intoxication? Um, obviously, uh, the issue of binge drinking, uh, high levels of intoxication are issues right across the state at certain times and in certain places. Uh, our officers are trained to deal with that in an appropriate professional way. What do you say about the fact his problems weren't picked up earlier? I mean, the comments that he made about wanting to napalm members of the public, obviously there was clearly issues there that, that perhaps the, the system, there was no flagging that he was clearly having problems. Certainly our systems are designed to try and identify problem officers. Uh, we know that uh, because of the price incident that we have to redouble our efforts in that regard. And in fact, we have been working on this for some time uh, to try and identify key warning signs. Um, uh, as you know, um, some of the areas our people work in are quite uh, challenging in this regard. Uh, night after night as they go out to work, they are faced with very, very dif difficult situations, uh, high levels of drinking, high levels of violence. But again, um, it's up to us as an organisation to uh, try and interpret what those warning signs are. Moodiness, uh, shortness of temper, uh, but it still comes down to uh, supervisors identifying those issues and um, taking those officers into their care, um, giving them counselling, making sure that appropriate uh, high level authorities are aware so that we can deal with those officers appropriately. How much have taxpayers had to fork out because of compensation for the victims? With um, I don't have those figures with me and in fact some of those uh, um, uh, amounts of compensation are yet to, be, yet to be determined in the price case. Are you confident that the culture of the Ellie Beach Police Station has improved uh, since the time that uh, Price was serving there? Um, I'm absolutely sure of that, yes. <coughs> and what about the community sentiment? There obviously it's really important that tourists are, you know, it's a vital industry for them in Ellie Beach. Uh, do you think that the community will respond positively to the sentencing today? I think that we've, um, we've still got a lot of work to do to regain the credibility that we previously had in that particular community. I would hope that in most communities across the state there is an understanding that whilst, uh, whilst the police officer's job is uh, complex and somewhat dangerous at times, uh, there is still the expectation, and, and we certainly recognise that, 
um, that officers must meet proper standards of conduct no matter what the situation they're confronted with. Do you acknowledge the difficulty the young officer who blew the whistle on this must have faced at the time? Um, I, I'm certainly very proud of that officer. I know the, Queen, the whole of the Queensland Police Service is proud of that officer for the st stand that she took. Uh, she was prepared to get up and say this is not right and uh, bring it to the appropriate um, uh, knowledge of the senior officers um, in that area. And of, as a result of that action was taken, um, her actions are in the finest tradition of our organisation and we congratulate her. We've also taken steps to uh, support her right throughout this whole uh, issue, as we would do for any officer in that situation. But what stage do we, you know, obviously, um, Officer Price overreacted, but where, where do we draw the line between police being provoked and the difference between assault, heavy handedness, and restraining people who are drunken, abusive, spitting, that sort of stuff? Um, one of the things that we are careful to do with all of our officers is to help them to understand that the environment in which they work is often uh, complex and is often quite dangerous in terms of um, the use of force against them. However, um, our training, um, our codes of conduct are all designed that under the circumstances only an appropriate and reasonable level of force is used to overcome force provided to the officers. Um, certainly in Price's case, this, that was no, not the case and certainly nowhere near the mark. Did you concede that it must be frustrating for officers who are clearly provoked in the line of fire, so to speak, by, by these abusive sorts of people? But these are professional police officers, just as uh, you see ambulance officers, fire officers, doctors, anyone in the professions uh, who has to deal with people at times um, who, are, who are violent. Um, who are unruly. Um, the level of response is always has to be measured and professional. And what, what do you say just to other bad police as far as being a whistleblower? Because obviously it was very difficult for that young woman to come forward and do what she did. Um, but today at least she's, you know, she's seen some justice being done. Absolutely. Um, I say to all police officers, if you see another police officer doing the wrong thing, and particularly, particularly when uh, levels of violence are perpetrated against uh, victims, uh, community victims, whether, whether or not those victims have actually, actually provoked uh, the initial uh, violence themselves, uh, those officers should come forward and provide advice to senior officers so the matter can be appropriately dealt with. Sometimes, as we know, I mean people will crack, there's no doubt about it, um, but we can do things to help those officers and take the appropriate action, whether that's through the disciplinary system or the welfare system, in dealing with those issues.